We are starting to see a little Thank bit of know. positivity creeping into the market in today's session after a massive sell-off in yesterday's session. Dow down 3.6%. In South Africa, we saw a loss of over 3%. What do you make of the recent moves? Um, obviously, the volatility has been very high. Um, and the contagion on the debt crisis in Europe is uh, becoming very real at the moment. And I think people just uh, are panicking and, and for good reason. Um, the debt crisis is a really big problem and it uh, looks like it could slow um, the recovery that we're having. Well, uh, Rob, good afternoon. It's Stephen here. Although we've seen a bit of a recovery on our market this afternoon, we're up by about a fifth of a percent. It still looks pretty shaky at this stage. In fact, we're retracing some of those gains. Do you think this volatility is going to continue in the short term? Uh, I think uh, this weekend will, people will settle down in Mel what's happened over the week. We see some changes that have come in from the Obama uh, administration. Um, so we'll see what, uh, what the impact that has on the U.S. markets tonight. I think some of the bounce back that we're having today is people covering shorts. Um, and that's where some of that buying is coming back. So you have to be cautious to see that uh, the buying in the market is not just short covering. That's popping up the market and getting ready for another sell-off. So a lot of caution needed over the next few days. European Union leaders also set to meet this, this evening. And we know that the euro has come under significant pressure. We also know that Germany's move to ban short selling was not coordinated. And uh, there is quite a lot of bad words being said between the likes of France and Germany. How do you see that playing out? Because we have seen some confidence restored into the euro, partly because because we've seen some kind of intervention from the Swiss National Bank. Yes, it does look like uh, the Swiss Bank has been buying some euros. Uh, some euros. Um, I think what we really need to that we need to see over the weekend is if uh, Europe starts to pull together as one. At the moment, there's too much uh, indecision between the different countries. Uh, we saw obviously with that naked short selling ban in Germany, it wasn't followed by the rest of the European Union. Um, and what the market really looking for now is um, some strong leadership from the European Union and uh, leadership that uh, looks like it's uh, um, discussed between the whole Union, not just, uh, not just Germany or not just France. So uh, if that comes to fruition uh, and they do pull together, then maybe we'll have some stability over the next week. Well, Rob, with investors dumping equities across the globe, where have they been going, do you think? Because they certainly haven't been investing into the gold, uh, gold sector, have they? No, it, uh, people have been taking profit on gold, they've been taking profit on uh, most of the commodities. We saw that, that new ETF in, in platinum was uh, uh, very liquid uh, when it started and there was a very big push in that. Uh, people made a lot of money in the first uh, quarter of the year on that uh, ETF in platinum and uh, people taking a lot of profit out of the market. So uh, a lot of selling there is just profit. Uh, and people are now weary sitting back into cash and waiting to see what happens over the next week. Mm. Uh, Rob, also just looking at the, the kind of levels that we're seeing on the JSC Top 40 and the JSC All Share because we are starting to breach key technical levels. Uh, do you think that we'll be seeing some more downside from here onwards? As you mentioned, a lot of nervousness, a lot of cautiousness coming to the fore, but it's also quite important to note that fundamentally things are looking slightly better. On the fundamental side, uh, things are looking better. The, the United States was upgraded. Um, some of the emerging markets have been upgraded. So Africa um, looked good in the last week as well on some upgrades. Um, so on the fundamentals, yes, uh, we are recovering. We see retail sales recovering locally as well as overseas. Uh, so the fundamentals are looking good. Um, and we really need uh, uh, some stability from the Eurozone. If we get that stability, then I think we can carry on. But we're at uh, technical levels uh, uh, and we're breaking support. Uh, the S&P looks like it's breaking the 200-day moving average. Uh, we really need to stay above that. Uh, if we do break those levels, uh, there's a good possibility of another 5 to 7% down. So, Rob, in that case, would you be uh, sitting on the sidelines at this stage, or do you think there are some buying opportunities in the market? Uh, some of the stocks uh, have been knocked about 20%. Anglo's American uh, yesterday was down 20% from about a month ago. Uh, so there is a little bit of value there. If you're totally uninvested at the moment and you're sitting in cash, um, you could pick up a little bit of stock at these levels. Um, but I'll be very cautious. Uh, if you're already invested, um, I'll be lightening my, my load and just, uh, just waiting to see for the next week or two. I think uh, we had a very crux point in the market. Um, and these support levels really need to hold. And we have to break above these support levels. Uh, so I'll be sitting mainly in cash. Um, and maybe one or two stocks, if you're looking very closely, are showing a little bit of value. Um, but it's a very difficult stock pick at the moment. Um, but maybe one or two of the big uh, miners uh, at the lower levels. Rob, do you think that the Eurozone debt crisis that is playing out could actually derail the global recovery? Because some are still of the view that we could be seeing some kind of double dip recession. Um, I think it could. Um, depends uh, how weak that euro goes. Um, you know, if the euro goes really weak, uh, it does help them uh, 
uh, export a lot of goods, but it, it can. Uh, there is a, a big a big problem that if that euro zone stops uh, and, and growth and we start to see some deflation there, that we will have a double dip recession. Um, we'll just show another year or another 18 months out. So we're going to have uh, very, very thin markets for the next year if it does. But there is that risk. Uh, let's see what the, year, the euro zone can do over the next week. Well, do you think some questions are now being asked, Rob, about the, the state of the U.S. economy? We had that data yesterday, the weekly jobless claims worse than expected. We had the lead indicator falling by 0.1 percent, and the market was looking for a, a gain of about 0.2 percent. So do you think that, that the, the U.S. economic recovery is intact at this stage? I mean, it is intact. Um, for the last uh, few months, we've been waiting for unemployment to improve, and, and that's the crux. The, the whole way through this, uh, this rally, we've been waiting to see uh, the jobless numbers come down, and they haven't. Uh, I think 9.9 .9 in the U.S., we see Spain up at 20 percent. Um, so unemployment is, is the real crux, and it's just it's stopping that consumer from getting going and uh, in turn stops the GDP, uh, GDP growth. So um, we're, from the U.S. Uh, economy side, we really have to see some, uh, some improvement in unemployment. We need unemployment to go below 9%. Um, and if it can do that and they start to create jobs, I think uh, the recovery will continue. But a very close look on unemployment uh, throughout the Eurozone. Uh, South Africa and uh, in the United States. Emerging market currencies also taking quite a big knock, uh, partly because most of them are linked to commodities as well. The RAND breached that key 8 RAND level, uh, Rob. Do you think that we could see the RAND deteriorate further from these level onwards? I suppose, again, it really all depends in terms of what the Eurozone is going to come up with and whether the, the bout of risk aversion that we've seen is going to uh, reverse and we could see some appetite coming to the fore. Um, obviously, we have to take a close look on commodities and commodity pricing. If those commodity prices improve, um, we'll see some strength come back into the RAND. Um, I think 810 to 814 on the RAND is a level that we have to watch. Um, if it breaks there, then maybe there'll be some more weakness up to 850. Uh, but if uh, the Eurozone uh, settles down over the next week, we could see a very strong pullback all the way back to 750. So at the moment, you, we're sitting in a range um, between about nine, uh, 790 and about uh, 8 Rand 10. I think you have to watch either side of that and see which way it breaks, but it's difficult to call the RAND at the best of times. Uh, but there is a, a bit more weakness if this Eurozone can't sort themselves out over the next week. Of course, Rob, we've had quite a busy results week here in South Africa. Uh, not much happening today. There was an announcement from British American Tobacco this morning, which appeared quite interesting. It looks like it has an extension of another two years for institutional shareholders holding their stock to realign their, their offshore investment portfolios. So good news for the market. Um, that is good news uh, for the market. I think uh, when the market is so volatile uh, as it is currently, um, to move very, very big positions out uh, uh, of a stock is a bit more difficult. Uh, liquidity starts to, to get a bit thin. Uh, and for big institutions and long-only funds that have been holding uh, BTR to exit these, these very, very large positions that they've had for uh, a, few now, a few years gets very difficult and it puts a lot of pressure on the stock. So I think it's very positive uh, that they've extended that for two years. It takes and allows the big institutions that are invested in BTR um, uh, a much bigger leeway to, to reduce their position. So positive for BTR and I think you'll see some holders come back into BTR. You mentioned you'll see some holders coming back, uh, big asset managers out there, big unit trusts as well. So do you think we'll be seeing some uh, big moves on British American tobacco going forward? Now, obviously, it's a very good yield in, dividend yield in uh, stock, and it is quite defensive. So I do think that some of the asset managers will come back in and uh, take, uh, take some of that BTR. So we could see um, a little bit of a pickup in that share. It has come back from about 260. It's now trading about 226. So it had had a big pullback, and I think there will be some, uh, some buying at these levels.